we've just arrived at our campsite in very Welsh Wales. But first we're going for a little hike. Where are we? Um, in Wales. <laughs> and it's freezing. Freezing. <laughs> we're on the Torrent Walk. As soon as we literally just come through the gate, as soon as you get through the gate onto this route, there's a raging white river. It's gorgeous. It's very pretty. Come and have a look at this. We've also let Jack off the lead. Looks like the whole route is up along this river. So there might be any 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 talking to the, oh my god, look at that bit there. Wow. Any talking to the camera might be shouting. shouting. <laughs> What a place this is. Less than a five minute walk from the campsite. It's just, it's just gorgeous. Brought me mushroom knife. There's no mushrooms. Look at this for a view. <laughs> Just come up quite a bit of a hill there. So I'm leaking. Find a nice little spot off the trail in this beautiful woodland surroundings to have our dinner. Could have bought a tasty little dinner, we're gonna have a brew as well. So we have got our Croissant. Got a little bit of gammon trim ham from a local butcher. Never done this before, but it seems like a good idea. And then we've got a bit of Lake District extra mature cheddar. I can actually hear the main road from here. I don't think it's the A470 or the A483 or so. I don't I don't know what it is actually. Don't know why I'm even bothering guessing. It's a good driving road. Come back this way in the car. Ham. Yeah. <laughs> well there's no such thing as too much ham, but there is some leftover ham, yeah. So brought a little transier pan. I'm gonna have my old Soto Windmaster stove and the idea is oh nice fit get that in there this is a titanium plate so it's okay with the heat oh look at that I think that might be done shit Yeah, uh, I'll have that one, babe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's black. Mm -hmm. Black again. 
I can't get the bloody thing off. <laughs> oh my god. That's the fella. Take two. Need to take the handle off as well because that transfers the heat. I can't pick it up, it's too hot. Have you ever been served such a gourmet meal in the woods before? Never. Never? Not not since the last time I got served a gourmet meal in the woods, which was fajitas. Yeah? Yeah, so, yeah. And Jack's being a good boy. Only because he's tied to that tree. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Looks great this way. <laughs> but I distracted him a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's Instagram versus reality. <laughs> Mine looks like Mine's proper lava. <laughs> mm -mm. So that's the woodland flavour. Mm -hmm. Hey, well, it works. Mm. Right, you can't have it again. Apart from tasting like charcoal, it's quite nice. Mine was really, really nice and didn't taste of charcoal. I just want to say, um, don't often thank people, but. Thanks for our last video. We haven't we haven't put one out for a month or two, and our last video got a lot of people saying the, the glad to see us back. You must all be drunk or idiots, but you were glad to see us back. <laughs> Get to use my snow peak kit today. Got some little hot lips, so you can drink out of it without burning your gob. So this is our spot for dinner. So we've got a river and waterfall this way. Al's camping kitchen there. And then we have Monsieur Jacques Cousteau here. Oh, yeah, here. Tied to the tree. Ah. Forgot my spoon, so I have to use a spatula. Sarah gets the big pot for big brew. And you'll also notice she has too much milk. If you're wondering where we are, that's where we are. <laughs> Got a OS map on me. Watch. So the idea behind this. <clears throat> Just slip that on there. You don't burn your lips. Clever, eh? You're happy. Always happy when I've got a cup of tea, my love. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't burn your lip. <laughs> <laughs> Bellies are full. We've got for a mooch. And uh, as Sarah's just said. We are leaving no trace. <laughs> <laughs> I only had tea in me. That was yeah. no trace, by the way. Face it. <laughs> it's for the, the view. Oh my good god, yes. <laughs> so like I've always said, don't complain about rain if it gives you waterfalls. Do you know when they say people, when they get to the edge of a cliff, they're a bit like, oh, I might jump off because I'm close to the edge. Jack is one of them things. <laughs> He's scared of water, yet seems to be desperate to get through the fence and over the cliff. Find myself a mushroom and I'm going to leave it there because it's an absolutely stunning location for that mushroom to take in. It just keeps getting better. I mean, Which? look, 
This view? I mean, look at the big tree falling. I set myself aside, be the way on this trial. If you don't know the way, we can stop and make a change. This is one of the best walking routes we've done in a while. And this is also a walking route, less than five minutes from a great campsite. What more can you want? I read that this was a circular walk. And as you get to the top of the route, there's a car park. And just after the car park, there's a bridge and a gate. And it looks like that's the return leg. It just takes you to the main road, no path. Yeah, yeah. worst case scenario, you have to walk down the same route you came up and put up with all this beauty all over again. <laughs> Let's crack on. I know we're going somewhere. Just caught a glimpse of the route, the return leg of the route. And it sits much higher than this, away from the water. Obviously you've got to navigate that bit of road first. I, we haven't seen it and we might, we obviously need to do it one day just to see it, but I can't see it being as good as this leg. And that's the end of the route. Back to the gate. What a stunning, stunning little walk. We're now back of the van, this beautiful little farm campsite. We stayed here, I reckon, how long ago do you reckon we stayed here? Seven, seven years, ago. seven years ago, in our old T4. This location, you can just see forest and hills surrounding you. It's gorgeous, absolutely stunning. Just bought a bag of logs from the uh, reception. Jack is currently gnawing on the biggest chew in the world. I didn't think it would last two seconds, but it seems to be quite a hardened chew and he's absolutely enthralled with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was gonna say, we're gonna get the beers open in a bit, but wait until you see the beer that I've bought. If you follow us on social media, you might well have seen it, but. I know that he's a loser, a <laughs> loser. A freaking weirdo loser. I hope it works out. Mm -hmm. I think it's time for a beer. What time is it? Half past five. But there's two people down there with beer, so I think that makes it mean we should have a beer. Okay. Wait for it. Oh, wrong one. There she is. So it's a Northern Monk, Aunt Bessie's, Apple Crumble and Custard Pale Ale. Sounds fairly normal to me. Light's a bit weird in here, but you'll get it. I don't know. See if the little crumble crumbs come out of the can. Oh no, it's quite smooth. It's very clear. It's like syrup. It's actually a cider, isn't it? <laughs> Northern Monk and Aunt Bessie's are serving up a sweet and creamy pale ale based on the old school favourite, apple crumble and custard. I just don't know how they do it. Okay. What are you getting? I'm getting a woody aroma. <laughs> Hints of berries from France. I'm also getting 
A tin of custard. Is it ambrosia? And a bit apple-y. Yeah, I reckon it's ambrosia custard, yeah. Is it cidery then? It's hard to describe. And it's worth a try. But I wouldn't buy a case. It's not bad. Give it a go. We've been sitting in front of the fire. We've had a few beers. Sarah's realised we need to eat food, so she's made some tuna pasta. And uh, tonight has been very, very good. <laughs> okay. Bye. Having a good night, Hesketh? It's been alright. <laughs> Beer, fire. And a sleepy dog. Very sleepy dog and then we've got there he is there's jack there's alan that's a bit of a better light <laughs> we've got pasta cooking for tuna pasta and then fingers crossed after our what well, that's my my fifth peroni we're gonna have second fifth <laughs> um hot chocolates and marshmallows got enough cheese on there love <laughs> I got a bit happy with the grating. But there's nothing wrong with cheese meat. Rain stop play. We've had food. One or two beers. Maybe three. I've had five. Maybe you five. Had four. Seven. Oh, you've had four. <laughs> I've had five. So yes, on the beer front. I've had five. Alan has had four. Four. Just four. So my beers. Twice the strength of Sarah's. No, and twice the volume. No, it's not. So like there's a 330 mil, mine are like nine million mil. No, they're not. All Alan's are like desserts in a can, so they're like one percent. <laughs> Just because they taste sweet doesn't mean to say they're not lethal. 1%. Jack has had a really good day today, walking wise, and he's fairly settled. We're really pleased. But the fire's been great tonight. Don't be surprised if in the next 6 to 12 months you see us living in Wales. Because we kind of convinced ourselves we need to live in Wales. Or the Lake District. Oh, granted, the dream has always been to live in the Lake District since way before we started this channel. But the Lake District is a, just a tiny bit too expensive. Wales is a little bit more affordable, and Wales has potentially a bit more to offer. So um, tomorrow's forecast is heavy rain all day. But we have seen a couple of houses for sale around here and one of them is really interesting so we might even go and have a little drive past and see what it's like Oh God, he does. He does. Yes, he does. <laughs> I don't remember where we left off last night, but uh, morning. It's a, as forecast, a wet one, and um, everything's just wet because <laughs> it's in for the day. You either get out and get drenched. If you don't fancy today, or well you go for a drive somewhere in the dry, I think it might be a cup of tea, quick breakfast, drive into Dolgathlai because we want to go and see what the village is like. 
I believe it's really nice. Might have to get the dog out for a quick walk and then go home. But if you take one thing from me, this campsite for that walk yesterday alone is worth it. I think it took us two and a half hours and that included stopping to make our dinner and a cup of coffee and tea. So it doesn't take long at all and there's plenty of other stuff to do around here when it's dry. We're cooking. Crampets. I'll fit three in because it's three each. Okay. Oh, it's gonna be a squeeze. Squeeze it in. I'm gonna. There we go. Somebody asked, I think it was in the comments to the video, I think last week's video, about if we could show a true picture of what it's like in the van with the dog. I think really the main issue we have, he is actually quite good, is the dogger. Dog her everywhere. Dog her on your crumpets, dog her on the floor, the worktops, everything. It's one of them, we clean the van before we come and then you've just got to live with it because this dog sheds. Hogging the bed, <laughs> licking your face when you're trying to get your socks on, trying to pinch your socks when you're trying to put your socks on, farting, although I have to put up with that with Sarah as well. When you're trying to get something out of a little space in a little van. Luckily we've got a fairly small dog compared to Oscar, but he still takes up the space. Apart from that, everything's sound. So from a wet and windy Wales, that's us done, isn't it? It's very wet. But do you know what? I take it over the heat from the other week. <laughs> Probably, yeah. We're currently on the side of the A487. We're just about to turn right to Blanofestiniog and Betazakoid instead of carrying on straight to Port Maddock. And the reason why I'm saying that is because I need to come back to this road in my car because it's a nice road. <laughs> Jack, stop whining. We are on our way to Conway to have a brew with my mum and dad. We'll hopefully be out next weekend if the weather's okay. And then the following weekend we're going to Scotland for a week Unless if the weather's hot. okay. We, if the weather's bad, cold, windy, whatever, we're going to Scotland. But if it's hot and sunny, we're not going because of the midges. The campsite, by the way, £22, which is not bad at all. Uh, that was just a grass pitch with no electric. Although I didn't quite agree with the dog being four quid a night. I don't know why people charge for dogs. See you in the next video. Ta-ra!